Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We're back again with more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. And this time, we continue with the party member builds. Let's go through Lan, who, in my opinion, is probably the best pure archer you get as a party member. I like Arushale a little bit more, but that's because she comes with a little bit of spell casting. As far as what she can do as an archer, I don't feel like she stands up to what Lan brings to the party. Now, in this particular build, we're gonna go all the way through 20 levels of Zen Archer. I have mentioned before in a previous video that if you wanted to add a pet to your party, Lan is a good person to go ahead and uh, move to either Sacred Huntsman or to, I think it's called Divine Hunter. Um, I recommend that you do that after level three. At level three, you are going to get Zen Archery, which allows Lan to use his Wisdom modifier instead of his Dexterity modifier on ranged attack rolls when using a bow. So once you have that, you can go ahead and move over to a different class that also specializes in Wisdom, and he can continue pumping that stat while helping your party. I think the Zen Archer class is absolutely fantastic. The only reason I don't like it on land is because I feel like with all the other party members, they have a class that specifically fits their personality and they usually talk about it to some degree in dialogue. Whereas I don't feel like Zen Archer matches up with anything that's actually going on with land in the game, but the mechanics of it, are absolutely fantastic. So you get AC bonus. The monk adds his wisdom bonus to his AC as long as he is unarmored and unencumbered. So you definitely want to make sure Lan is not using armor. Um, and in addition, Zen archers are proficient with long bowls and composite long bowls. So you definitely want to keep him with a composite long bow in his hand. And a Zen Archer can make a Flurry of Blows as a full attack action, but only when using a bow. Um, the Zen Archer does not apply a Strength Bonus on damage rolls made with Flurry of Blows unless he is using a Composite Bow with a Strength Rating. Also, a Zen Archer cannot use Rapid Shot or Mini Shot when making a Flurry of Blows with his bow. You start out with Perfect Strike, um, which allows you to roll your attack roll twice and take the higher result. Great way to try to ensure you can punch through a high AC. And he also gets Point Blank Shot, along with the first feat that he takes, which is Combat Reflexes. Now, normally, I'd be irritated at um, this being a feat that you take on an archer, especially at the first level. But when you see how Lan's um, level ups break down, I think it becomes more and more clear. Combat Reflexes is actually fantastic for his build. Still probably not what I would have taken at level one, but not a bad choice at all when you see how everything shakes out. Um, at level three, he does start to get into a key pool, which allows him to cast some specific spells. Honestly, most of them are not all that great, but it's still cool that it gives him a slight degree of versatility. At level five, he's going to get key arrows, which means that the Zen Archer always deals his unarmed damage with the arrows from his bows. For example, a medium Zen Archer short bow normally deals 1d6 damage. Using this ability, his arrows deal 1d8 damage. Really, really cool stuff. Um, you do repeatedly get access to a list of Zen Archer bonus feats that you can select. It's kind of weird to me <laughs> that they give you Rapid Shot and Mini Shot as a uh, Zen Archer bonus feat when it specifically points out that you probably don't want to use those, but it is what it is. And then at level nine, they're automatically going to give you Snapshot, which is fantastic. You're going to see that 
Land uses Snapshot to great effect in this build. And then finally at level 20, the Monk is going to gain some damage reduction um, against anything that's non-chaotic. So really cool stuff. I think his build is absolutely fantastic. Let's go ahead and dive into it now. So for skills, Land comes with Athletics, Mobility, and Perception as what he's already leveling while he does have class skills and a bunch of other skills as well. Lan is one of only two party members, I think, or maybe it's three, that actually comes with athletics as a class skill, but he's the only one who can level it up comfortably. Sela and Greyborg get athletics, but they both wear armor, which is going to significantly lessen your athletic score. Lan should always not have armor, so he's an absolutely fantastic person to have specializing in athletics. Obviously, mobility comes up a lot, so there's no harm whatsoever in keeping his score high here. And you all already know how I feel about perception. The fact that he automatically comes specialized with it absolutely works for me. And then next you have your Zen Archer bonus fee. The game automatically says that you should go for precise shot, and I couldn't agree more. It's going to take away that negative four penalty you would usually have to eat on your attack rolls. Definitely go with it. And then you have the option of going with either the long bow or the short bow as the weapon that Land is specialized in. The game recommends the long bow, and I concur. I absolutely love my archers to have a long bow. But as I've already mentioned, he does give a feat that's going to increase the damage you are able to do with the short bow. There are a lot of great short bows in this game. So don't feel like you're necessarily going to short yourself if you decide to pick the short bow instead. Both of these are absolutely worthy choices. Okay, and then at level three, the game automatically tells you to select deflect arrows. And this is where we're getting off the automatic level up bandwagon. I want you to go ahead and select Deadly Aim. It's going to give you a nice damage boost to your arrows. You do take a ranged attack penalty on it, but don't worry. Land can eat that. It's no problem. And then you also get Point Blank Master. This allows you to use your ranged weapon while you are threatened without provoking an attack of opportunity. So you want to go ahead and put it on whichever bow you selected at level two. In this case, we selected Longbow. At level four... You get to pick your attribute point. Like I mentioned before, you want to increase wisdom and continue leveling up wisdom throughout your level ups. Now, I wouldn't be mad if you decided to take one point and even out strength since you should be using composite longbows that are going to take your strength modifier into account. That is going to give you some additional damage. So not necessarily a bad choice there, but... Outside of maybe one point in strength, you want to go ahead and focus on wisdom. And at level four, you also get access to your first key power. Honestly, I don't think any of these are really all that great. You've got bark skin, but at this point in the game, you're not going to really be close enough to make much use of bark skin. Land shouldn't be getting hit a lot yet. Um, Scorching Ray, you shouldn't be using um, damaging powers. You should be using your bow. Sudden speed, you're not going to be running around everywhere, so I don't see this as all that great of a boon. True Strike is okay. It's going to give you a plus 20 insight bonus to your attack roll, so if you're facing an especially tough enemy, this could be useful, so I go ahead and take it here. And then for your level 5 feet, you already know what I'm taking, Outflank. All your melee characters, all your archers should absolutely have Outflank. It's going to increase your flanking bonus to plus 4, and whenever you score a critical hit against the flank creature, it provokes an attack of opportunity from your allies. This comes up all the time. Great, great stuff. At level six, for your next key power, I would go ahead and get Bark Skin. You're rapidly approaching the time when Bark Skin is actually really going to be useful for you. And then for your level six Zen Archer bonus feat, I get Improved Precise Shot. It allows your ranged attacks to ignore anything but total concealment and cover. I'm sorry, there's one other thing I forgot to mention about Zen Archer. As you level up, it's going to give you more and more ways to overcome damage reduction. So at level three, 
your uh, key strikes allow the monks unarmed attacks to be treated as magic. So basically your arrows are going to be treated as magic. Then they're going to be treated as cold iron and silver. Then at level 10, they're going to be considered lawful. And then finally at level 16, they're going to be adamantine. So more and more ways to cut through damage resistance and do more damage towards enemies. At level seven, you have access to get snapshot here. Remember, do not take it. You're automatically going to get snapshot at level nine. So that would be a wasted feat. So instead we're going to take clustered shots. At level eight for your key power, I would go ahead and get abundant step. It's basically going to allow him to teleport to a different place. There are definitely some situations where this is useful. At level nine, I take improved critical longbow. And then you're automatically going to get snapshot at level nine. At level 10 for your Zen Archer bonus feat, go ahead and pick up rapid shot. Again, make sure you don't actually activate rapid shot, but it's a requirement to get the next feat that we want. So I suggest you go ahead and take it here. At level 11, you have to have point blank shot, snapshot, and rapid shot in order to get access to improve snapshot. So this is going to allow you to threaten an additional five feet. So with snapshot, it allows you to threaten squares that are within your melee reach with your ranged weapon and allow you to make attacks of opportunity. Improved snapshot is going to increase the space in which you're able to make ranged attacks of opportunity by five feet. At level 12, I get diamond body, makes you immune to all poisons. At level 13, I get greater snapshot. So now this is going to give you an additional five feet that you can threaten for attacks of opportunity. And whenever you make an attack of opportunity, you gain a plus two bonus on the damage roll and a plus two bonus on rolls to confirm a critical hit with that attack. These bonuses increase based upon your base attack bonus. Great, great stuff. So when you combine this with the fact that you are increasing Land's wisdom, which is increasing all of his saves and his AC, he basically becomes almost like another off tank that you can put right up close to the front of the line, getting tons of attacks of opportunity while being very, very sturdy against any enemies who attempt to hit him. And he will not provoke attacks of opportunity, even if he's shooting an enemy that's directly in front of him. There are other party members you can try to do this combination with, but none of them do it as well as land. Like Windowog and Arushalay, neither one of them allow you to pump their wisdom scores in order to pump their attack scores. So Lan pulls this off the very, very best, and it's a devastating combination to have as an archer. At level 14, I pick up Diamond Soul. It's going to give you spell resistance equal to the current monk level plus 10. At level 14, for the Zen Archer bonus feat, might as well go ahead and finally pick up Deflect Arrows. At level 15, get Critical Focus. Nothing special at level 16. For level 17, get Sickening Critical. At level 18, for your Zen Archer bonus feat, pick up Dodge. And then at level 19, Hammer the Gap. Okay, so now that we've went through the character levels, let's go ahead and look at the Mythic options. For Mythic level one, it depends on what difficulty you're playing at. If you're playing on normal or something close to that, then I like cleaving shot, which is gonna allow you each time you deal critical damage with your ranged attack or kill the opponent, you deal your weapon damage to all of the enemies in 10 feet. You should be triggering this all the time, so definitely, definitely worth taking. But if you're on a difficulty that's on something like core or higher, it's probably more worthwhile to take ranging shots right from the beginning so that you get that stacking plus one bonus on attacks when you're missing against enemies and it's going to assist you in hitting those hard to reach ACs. So I usually play on normal, so I'm going to pick up cleaving shot. At mythic level two, grab deadly aim mythic. At mythic level three, whichever one you didn't grab for mythic level one, go ahead and grab it here. At mythic level four, get improved critical longbow. At mythic level five, get ever ready at mythic level six get flawless attacks at mythic level seven get the bigger they are at mythic level eight me personally i like mythic brew potions 
I think it makes absolutely I think it makes absolute sense based upon Land's background that he knows how to take herbs and put together potions and things of that nature and knows how to make use out of whatever is around in his environment. If for whatever reason you don't like that choice, then you have point blank shot, weapon focus, weapon specialization. You can pick from any of those to try to continue to develop his effectiveness as an archer. At mythic level nine, grab distracting shots. And then for mythic level 10, you can pick any one of the other mythic feats that I mentioned that you could take instead of mythic brews, or you could go into additional mythic ability and take always a chance so that you don't miss when you roll a one on an attack roll. Okay, so now we're in a combat situation. There's an enemy here, but they haven't acknowledged us just yet. Land is close to the front. We'll bring him up a little bit closer and then go ahead and take an attack on this character. So since he was able to essentially get the drop on this character, they let him go ahead and do a full attack. So he did 36, then 47, another 44, and another 46, and ended up flat out killing the character. So if you're the type of player who, actually this works in both real time and turn base, but especially in turn base, you wanna go ahead and kick things off with your archer. Oftentimes your archer will take out one to two characters by themselves if they're able to start the fight without the uh, enemy character knowing that they're there. It's very, very powerful and effective. All right, so first we're gonna bring Lan up much closer because he is not involved in any of the action. And then we're only gonna be able to take a pot shot at one of them, unfortunately. So it does around 39 damage. All right, so just now, this guild breath moved towards land. I moved the raptor away to ensure that the enemies had to get closer in order to get an attack. This gave land an attack of opportunity. He dealt four damage. Then he also dealt two constitution damage, uh, probably because of some gear that I have. And then he dealt another 60 damage to uh, this particular character. So great, great stuff. And now he's able to make a full round action. As you can see, he gets six attacks. It'd be seven if he was hasted. And he easily was able to take out both of them, dealing both constitution damage and regular damage to the enemies that he was going up against. And that's with him really not having... Um, all that great equipment. I did not use Lan for this playthrough. I used Arushale, so all this stuff I just kind of pulled off of her. So I don't have very many things that specifically revolve around getting attacks of opportunity, but he's still got a plus five longbow. Um, he's got braces of breaching, which is going to help him when he does a critical hit. He's getting a little bit more protection from a ring of protection, a plus one to attack from uh, when he's using point blank shot. And then, yeah, this skin leather cloak, anytime he lands a hit on an enemy for the first time in a the round, they've got to pass a 42 saving throw of 29, or they become partially skinned, which causes them to become staggered and take two points of constitution drain per round for 1d4 rounds. That's pretty nice. Um, these goggles give him a plus 10 competence bonus on perception checks. And if he confirms a critical hit with the bow, the target becomes disoriented for 1d4 round, suffering a negative four circumstance penalty to initiative checks, attack rolls, athletic, and perception checks. He's got a plus six to wisdom from his headband. His AC is at 37 with um, virtually no um, buffs cast on him. He's also got a plus two insight bonus on attack and damage rolls with ranged weapons against large and bigger enemies and a plus four bonus on initiative rolls. Um, he's got a uh, plus 10 competence bonus on initiative skill checks on athletic skill checks, as well as a plus two bonus to attack rolls for attack of opportunity. Um, this assat assailant's belt gives him a dexterity plus six and when he confirms a critical hit, for the next three rounds, the wearer gets a plus two circumstance bonus to attack and damage rolls. 
um, with with these gloves. Anytime he confers a critical hit, the enemy suffers a negative two penalty on saving throws against mind affecting conditions. Nanio, of course, would really appreciate that. And these boots are kind of redundant with the uh, um, robe that he's wearing, but it does give a plus five competence bonus on mobility skill checks. So not bad. Um, as you can see, it's a lot more geared towards Arushale, but it's decent stuff for me to be able to go into a combat example and show you what Lamb was capable of. Obviously with buffs on, and with some gear that's more geared towards the way he handles things, the damage numbers would have been higher, but I think it's very, very clear to see that he is extremely competent with a bow, someone who in your formation, you basically want to have him right there up front in the middle of the action with his wisdom and with a minimum amount of buffs, some that he can cast on himself. He'll be able to stand right in the mix of things with the tanks take the hits while doing great, great attack of opportunity damage and getting full round attacks with the bow that can be devastating as long as you have them geared up properly. And that's the build. So let me know down in the comments. Is there anything I should have done better? Um, do you have some ideas or some different ways I could take this build? Looking forward to hearing your feedback. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like down below, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.